Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, David Hicks. I'm a postdoctoral associate uh, for the, at the Autonomous Materials Design at Duke University. Uh, and so in this session, I'm going to be talking about some structural analysis tools uh, and methods of generating hypothetical materials uh, with the A-Flow software. And so I'm going to be focusing on uh, three modules. In particular, I'm going to be showing you the A-Flow symmetry software, uh, which uh, determines the isometries of a crystal, so the rotations, the mirror planes, et cetera, and how you can use these actually uh, to characterize materials. And um, you can also use this to reduce the cost of simulations. Then I'm going to be showing you the A-Flow prototype encyclopedia. And so this is our method of generating new hypothetical materials uh, in A-Flow. And then the final um, module that I'm going to be discussing is A-Flow Excel Finder. So this is a method for identifying uh, prototype structures given an input and also comparing crystallographic structures. All right, so to motivate this a little bit, uh, I basically wanted to highlight this idea of uh, structure versus properties. And so the goal here is that if we can better understand material properties, uh, we can uh, hopefully guide or tune materials design. And so one of the classic examples uh, with respect to symmetry is this idea of piezoelectricity. So for example, let's say that you have a particular material, uh, in this case, the half Heisler structure. And in this case, it doesn't have inversion symmetry. And so if you were to apply forces uh, on either side of the material, then you would get an accumulation of charge across the material. And so you would observe uh, a voltage. And so this is the phenomena of piezoelectricity. However, if you have a particular material, uh, for instance, diamond, that does have inversion symmetry, if you were to do the same procedure, you wouldn't get this accumulation of charges and you wouldn't observe a voltage across the material. And so this is an example where something like symmetry can easily be used to tune or screen out particular materials for particular applications. And so that's one motivation behind this uh, particular session. And the other is this idea of prototype structures. And so I think Professor Tower mentioned this idea before, but uh, essentially what we do here is we take a backbone crystal structure, so there's no atoms on it yet, we just have positions but we can go to the periodic table and decorate these sites with different elements. And so we can create, for example, these three materials, and then we can perform simulations on them. And what's nice is that we can uh, do this in a programmatic fashion, but we can also see that we can, by changing some of the constituent, ele constituent elements, we can essentially tune the properties. And so in this case, you can see how the band gap changes a little bit. And so these are kind of uh, two examples. Um, of why understanding or controlling structure is important. And I'm gonna show you some A-Flow tools uh, to do this. And one thing that I wanted to mention is that I'm gonna be showing kind of a brief overview of the online tools. However, there's many more uh, functions that you can uh, use uh, if you were to download the A-Flow software. And I'll mention that uh, towards the end of, the, uh, of this session. And of course, if there are any questions as I'm going, uh, feel free to post in the chat or raise your hand. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, so again, kind of highlighting this importance of symmetry, uh, I'm gonna show a couple examples of how we use symmetry in the A-Flow software. And so in the first session, I think we actually highlighted one example, uh, the Brillouin zones or band structures. And so uh, we gave you the, the paper or the article that basically highlights uh, the different uh, Brillouin zone definitions. But in order to get to that, we need to have an understanding of what the symmetry is. And so that particular part of A-Flow uses the A-Flow symmetry software. In addition, we can use symmetry to reduce the cost of certain simulations. So for example, if you're doing a phonon calculation, again, you might use the, uh, the band structure or the, um, these high symmetry K-paths to plot the uh, phonon band structure but you can also use symmetry to determine which uh, distortions when you're modeling phonons, which distortions are symmetrically equivalent or inequivalent. In addition to reducing simulation cost, we use symmetry to classify prototypes, which we'll see a little bit later on. And then as we saw in the REST API and the search page, we also use symmetry to characterize all of the materials in the A-Flow database. 
And so since we're using symmetry in all these different places, it needs to be very robust and work with limited human intervention. And so one thing that I wanted to highlight is the AFLO sim software. It works for all 3.5 million entries in the AFLO database without human intervention. And so we can um, do this um, automatically. And so users don't necessarily need to tune tolerances or play with um, thresholds to get consistent results. And so I kind of, um, and so this is where uh, the AFLO sim software comes into play. And so uh, this is a software package that we've developed uh, and it determines the invariance of a crystal under transformation. And so for instance, we're finding mirror planes, rotation axes, and from this information, we can determine uh, common descriptors such as the space group, Pearson symbol, Bravais lattice, and Wyckoff positions. And so I wanted to highlight some of the, I guess we'd say technical details of how we actually calculate this. Because typically we kind of take for granted that all the symmetries are calculated or known. Um, there's only 230 space groups, but how do we actually determine this for real materials? And so there's some subtleties that I wanted to highlight. And so how do we actually calculate symmetry elements? So the idea here is let's say that we have an arrangement of atoms. So we, here we have this diamond shape and we wanna know what symmetry it has. So for instance, we might wanna know whether or not it has fourfold rotational symmetry. And so essentially there's, what we need to do is we take the original atom positions and we transform them to see if the transformed atoms map back onto the original atom positions. And there's essentially three scenarios that we might encounter. And so they're shown on the right here. So in the ideal scenario, when we rotate the atoms, the transformed atoms map exactly onto the original atom positions. So we would say that this, the positions map, and so this is a rotational symmetry of our crystal. On the other end of the spectrum, we might see this bottom scenario here, where when we rotate, we don't actually map back onto atom positions. And so in this case, this is a twofold rotation instead of a fourfold. But really what happens is we, in most cases, we encounter this uh, region in the middle here, where when we rotate the atom positions, they don't line up exactly back onto the original positions. And so the question becomes, should this be a mapping or is this a mapping? And so in general, we need to apply a threshold for the mapping that says, okay, the atom positions are relatively close. And so in this case, we would say that this is an isometry of the crystal. And so this, happens a lot in the cases that we'll see, and we'll see some of them today. Um, and that's because we're working with real materials, real atom positions, and not the idealized atom positions um, based on theory. And so in general, uh, for these mappings, we typically take all of the original atom positions and uh, determine the distance to their transformed atom positions. And if they're less than this threshold, then the atoms or this um, symmetry is said to apply to our crystal. And so there, there are some more difficulties that I'll kind of briefly highlight, but again, since we're working with crystals, these are essentially periodic. We model them as periodic systems. And so we need to be careful when we're considering periodic boundary conditions. And then also typically when we do this numerically um, or computationally, we typically work in non-uniform metric spaces. And so we need to be careful when we're performing distance calculations. And so I'll briefly highlight some of the algorithm improvements that we've um, uh, added to the AFLOSIM software. As I mentioned, we can do this robust mapping procedure. Uh, and so the idea here is that uh, we're, we can perform these uh, mappings in direct and reciprocal spaces. And so again, this idea of a non-uniform metric tensor is very important. Otherwise you may get incorrect mappings. And so this is when we compare to other software, this is actually um, a point where other symmetry packages uh, have trouble. Additionally, uh, the AFLOSIM software has what we call an adaptive tolerance scheme. And so to highlight this, here I've shown a tolerance number line. And so in this case, we took a real material and we determined the symmetry using different tolerance thresholds, those different epsilons. And so, uh, we see that if we use tighter thresholds, we observe lower symmetry. So for instance, monoclinic symmetry. But then as we go up this tolerance number line, we observe lower, higher symmetry. And so in this case, uh, we might observe uh, face-centered cubic symmetry. 
And this is actually a real material that we encountered in the ICSD database. And so what I wanna mention here is you'll notice this void region. And so this is a particular case where the software or the algorithms determine inconsistent symmetry. And so instead of throwing an error, uh, the AFLOW SIM software will automatically change the tolerance value uh, until it finds consistent symmetry at a new epsilon value. And so as a user, this is nice because you don't need to worry about changing these tolerance values. Uh, you'll get consistent results with uh, this AFLOW SIM software without needing to um, play with any parameters. And so the last uh, technical detail that I wanted to mention is this idea of a system-specific tolerance. So for example, uh, let's say we have a particular uh, crystal and we don't know what tolerance threshold we should use. And so in general, AFLOW SIM will employ essentially two default tolerance values. And so the first is the minimum interatomic distance divided by 100. So this is what we call the loose tolerance threshold, or the, excuse me, the tight tolerance threshold. And then we also have the loose, which is essentially the same minimum interatomic distance divided by 10. And this is nice because you may say, okay, maybe I'll just use uh, a tenth of an angstrom or a hundredth of an angstrom for all the systems. But that may not necessarily uh, be good for all the systems you may encounter. And so this is essentially a system specific um, tolerance threshold. And another thing I wanna mention is there's only one tolerance value uh, that you use in AFLOW SIM. If you use some of the other symmetry packages in the community, you might need to play with angle tolerances or even tolerances for particular rotations. And so this is, again, kind of a highlight or an advantage of using the AFLOW SIM software. And so now that I've mentioned all these algorithm improvements, you might be wondering, well, how does this software package compare to some of the others in the community? And so we've actually done that benchmark. And so in this case, we compared uh, the AFLOW SIM software to some of the other packages in the community. Uh, if you're familiar, Fine SIM, uh, Platin, and SPG Lib. And what we've done here is we've taken a subset of the ICSD. So we took experimentally reported structures and their experimentally reported space group. And we compared them with the space group that was calculated by one of these packages. And so here we're plotting the mismatch. So when the experiment space group and the one calculated by one of these package, packages did not agree. And so in general, the taller these bar plots, the worse the uh, symmetry algorithm performed. And so you can see in general that actually AFLOW uh, has the fewest number of mismatches. Oh, let me go back. There we go. AFLOW had the fewest number of mismatches compared to some of the others where uh, you actually see some high mismatch counts. And you'll notice that we actually have some that are solid bars and some that are hash bars. And so in this case, you can see that um, we gave some of the other symmetry packages another chance to basically find consistent symmetry at a different tolerance value. And you can see that you can play with these tolerance thresholds and you can improve the results somewhat. But what I wanna highlight here is that uh, with AFLOW SIM, you don't need to specify any tolerance values to get consistent results. Well, with some of these other symmetry packages, you'll need to kind of play this tolerance game. All right, so I know that I, I kind of went through some technical details. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to post in the chat. Um, but for this next part, I'm gonna be discussing some of the things that you can actually calculate uh, with this software. So as I mentioned, uh, so for symmetries, we're calculating things like rotations, inversions, Roto inversions, which are rotations followed by inversions, glide planes, so a mirror uh, and a translation, and screw axes, which are uh, rotations uh, and with a parallel translation along them. And so these are, are all of the possible symmetry operations for a periodic system. And these are things that you can calculate with the software. And from this, we can calculate uh, relevant symmetry groups. So for example, if you wanted the symmetry of the lattice points, that would be the lattice point group. If you were to take the reciprocal of this, this would give you the Brillouin zone symmetry. There's also something known as the factor group, which is the unit cell symmetry. 
So essentially the symmetry elements confined to whatever uh, unit cell you're working with. And there's a few others here as well, the space group, uh, Patterson symmetry group, et cetera. The other thing I wanna mention is that you can calculate what's known as the crystal spin symmetry. And so for example, let's say you have a geometry, uh, a particular crystal with this geometry and the space group symmetry of this is space group 229. So it's body centered cubic. But if you introduce the magnetic moment, so in this case, spin up on the corners and spin down in the center, you're essentially specifying a degree of freedom that can break symmetry. And so in this case, we would actually see a lower symmetry. So we'd see space group 221. And so again, this is an analysis that you can do with the symmetry software. And if you're familiar with some of the ab initio packages such as VASP, this is actually a symmetry analysis that is used and it actually has a consequence on the particular properties that are being calculated when you include the spin degree of freedom. And in, in the general sense, you'll see that the crystal symmetry is greater than or equal to the crystal spin symmetry. So there's this subgroup relationship that you'll see. In addition, we calculate, or we can calculate many different symmetry descriptions. So for example, we can calculate the space group number, uh, the different labels. So the Hermann McGuin, Schoenflies, Hall symbol, the Pearson symbol. And we also can calculate things in a particular standard. So the de facto standard in the community is the International Tables for Crystallography or the ITC. And so here we can calculate the standard space group settings uh, and also the Wyckoff positions. So these are essentially the set of positions that are symmetrically equivalent uh, via one of the space group operations. And so for example, if you're familiar with the Wyckoff designation, you'll get things like the multiplicity. So that tells you essentially the number of points that are generate, generated by that symmetry operator, a particular letter designation, and then the representative coordinate. And so if you were to essentially apply the symmetry operation to this coordinate, you would see that you would get these four atom positions here. So that's, uh, again, this Wyckoff position idea. And again, you can calculate these with A-flow. All right, so I know I, I kind of gave a, a, a quick overview of some of the things that we can calculate. And so uh, in a second, I'm gonna show you how you can actually calculate some of these things online. Uh, but another thing that I wanted to mention is that you can actually visualize the symmetry elements on every entry page in a, on, of aflow.org. And so we've calculated, as I mentioned before, the symmetries of all 3.5 million entries. And so we can actually visualize these online. And so for example, here's a little video where we actually apply a fourfold rotation to a particular crystal. So actually, I'm gonna go ahead and actually take you uh, to an example page now, if you wanted to follow along. So if you'd like, uh, go to um, your browser and go to aflow.org. And like Dr. Esther showed us, we're gonna go to the Mendelib search. And I wanna basically find that same exact example, that sodium chloride. So we'll do chlorine and sodium on the search page. And just to make our lives easier, we'll go to two. Two species. And then we wanna grab um, the rock salt structure. So in this case, it's space group 225. So this first entry here. And again, uh, if I went too fast, I put this particular entry in the chat. Okay, so as we saw before, there's this JML visualization here. And to visualize the symmetry elements, you just go to the symmetry tab here. And if you click on this, you can visualize, essentially these are a factor group operations. So if you remember, that's what I said were the symmetry operations confined to the unit cell. And so you can see that in this case, there are 48 operations and these are all 48 listed here. So you can see rotations, reflections, and then some information about the axis angle. And so you can actually uh, rotate these or see these operations in real time. So 
to show this, I'm going to turn on this background supercell. And so you can basically see that we have a uh, trans uh, semi-transparent um, background supercell. And let's go ahead and visualize one of the rotations. So let's go ahead and look at this fourfold rotation here. You can highlight the axis of rotation. And then if you just hit apply, it'll rotate it by 90 degrees. And you can apply this essentially four times since it's a fourfold rotation. And you'll see after the fourth one, you're back in the original uh, unit cell. You can also visualize, for example, reflections. So here's the reflection plane. And apply. And if you apply it again, you're back on this same side of the mirror. And one of the ones that I wanted to highlight is this roto inversion. And so if you're familiar with roto inversions, they're essentially a rotation uh, followed by an inversion. And so in this case, it is um, an S3 uh, roto inversion. So if you apply this, you do a rotation, and then it inverts about this point here. So rotate and invert. And what's uh, interesting about S3 is that you need to apply it six times in order for it to get back into the unit cell. And so I wanted to highlight this particular example because uh, this was kind of a, a difficult point uh, when you're first learning uh, crystallographic symmetry. And so this visualization can help you visualize this. And so it can be a great uh, teaching tool um, or if you're just having trouble visualizing some of the symmetry elements, uh, this particular functionality is available to you. So, and again, this is available for all of the entries in the A-Flow database. All right, so are there any questions so far about um, some of the symmetry um, functionality or things that you can um, visualize online? Um, again, feel free to post in the chat. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and we'll actually do just a couple of demonstrations. Um, but yeah, it looks like there's a question. Uh, John? Yeah, I had a question about when it accesses the ICSD database. So it listed a number of possibilities that had the same space groups. Yes. But many of those are maybe for different temperature regimes. Um, Correct. Or different qualities. How can you tell which one's which? Uh, so I believe... Um, with some of the functionality that uh, Dr. Esters uh, showed, you can kind of differentiate between some of them uh, in a programmatic fashion. Uh, otherwise, you can actually just click on um, each entry page and you should see some differences. Ideally, um, especially for the ICSD, they'll all have different ICSD numbers. And so again, you could go ahead and look up this ICSD number and uh, look at the reference and see uh, what the temperature was uh, or pressure, for instance, where this was calculated. And so I think there is some essentially metadata that we have, but otherwise you, you, um, you do have access to this ICSD number and you can find more about the particular entry. But, but yeah, great question. Um, and, some, uh, and actually I'll show in the last session, uh, again, you might be wondering, um, again, so we have essentially all of these different rock salt structures, are any of them unique? Uh, or distinct. And so that's, uh, I'll be showing a particular software module that can help us determine uh, uniqueness or duplicates within the database. But yeah, great question. Any other questions? Okay. So next I'll show you how you can actually calculate some of these things online, so these symmetry descriptors. So again, if you go to aflow.org and if you click on this aflow online icon, it'll take you to this page. And again, if you just wanted to navigate right there, um, I put the link in the chat. So aflow online is a particular page where you can actually perform uh, some of the aflow uh, functionality online. So again, we're not installing AFLOW for this particular workshop, but some of the functionality, uh, the core functionality is online. And so I'm going to show you at least some of the symmetry functions that you can perform. So typically, um, 
we're working with uh, geometry files. So in this case, this is an example postcard. So this is VASC's geometry file. And just a quick uh, overview of what this looks like. So this is um, this first line is the title line. The second line is the typically it's the scaling factor, or if it's a negative value, it's the volume of the cell. These next three lines are the lattice vectors. Next, uh, this is the number of atom types. So in this case, there's one atom for type one, or uh, in this case, copper. And then there's seven for type two, which is uh, platinum. And then in this case, we have direct coordinates. And this tells us that basically we're representing all of the atom positions um, between zero and one essentially in a unit box. And then these are the fractional positions. And then in this case, the atom types here. And so you can also upload different geometry file formats. So for instance, you can upload a SIF here, uh, FHI Ames, uh, Abinit, uh, Quantum Espresso. And these are all the different geometry files that AFLOW can process automatically. So it'll auto detect the format. And so if you have a SIF, for example, from maybe an experimental database, for example, then you can actually upload that particular file here. And looks like I lost my mouse for a second. Let's see if I can get it back. There we go. Okay, so you would upload a geometry file here. And then if you scroll down, you can see there's a couple different functions you can perform. And what I want to highlight is the symmetry section here. And so we already have a default postcard um, that we've provided for you. So let's go ahead and calculate the space group. So if you click on the space group icon here and hit submit, this will determine the space group. And so in this case, it's space group 225, you get the label information. And then also with respect to the ITC, what setting and origin choice we've chosen. Uh, something that I'm not really gonna highlight uh, for this, for these exercises, but if you're familiar with some of the space group settings, so for example, for rhombohedral space groups, you can have hexagonal or rhombohedral. You can kind of toggle this with the setting here. But for space group 225, there's no uh, different settings. So that's the space group. You can calculate the Wyckoff positions. And so in this case, again, we see that this is space group 225. These are the lattice parameters uh, with respect to the ITC convention. And then in this case, we have three Wyckoff positions. So we have uh, the three listed here. We have the multiplicity, the letter designation, the site symmetry, and then the representative coordinate. And so in this case, we have three Wyckoff positions. If we scroll back up, We can calculate, for example, the Pearson symbol. In this case, it's CF32. So this is expected given uh, space group 225, which uh, we would expect to be cubic and face centered. I can zoom in just a little bit in case it's difficult to see. If we scroll back up, we can also calculate the crystal point group, so the point group information. So in this case, the crystal family, crystal system, the Hermann Maguin symbol for the point group, uh, the point group order, so there's 48 point group operations, and then some other designations as well. Scroll back up. We can calculate the equivalent atoms. And so this is similar to the Wyckoff designation. Basically, we're finding symmetrically equivalent atoms. And so in this case, uh, for the copper, since there's only one atom, it's not equivalent to any other atoms. But you'll notice that there are six uh, platinum atoms that are symmetrically equivalent. And so you can see that there's six. And then it basically is telling us how many or which ones are equivalent. And so in this case, it's uh, all six of these are equivalent to this one here. So you can perform this online. And then there's a couple more that I just wanted to highlight. 
the lattice information, and you, you'll see that we have real space lattice, reciprocal space, so in K space, and then super lattice. And super lattice is if we were to decorate all of the atoms positions in the crystal with the same type. So essentially it's the backbone structure without any decorations. And so we'll do the real space. So you can see that we get things like the lattice parameters. And then in this case, it's an FCC lattice. And again, Pearson symbol, but we could also do the reciprocal space. And as we would expect, we know, if you're familiar with crystallography, you know that the reciprocal of an FCC lattice is BCC. So we can calculate things like that. And then one of the, the last two that I wanted to highlight is crystallographic data. And data will just give you the lattice parameters back. But if you do extended data, basically this gives you a whole list of the different symmetry um, descriptors in one go. So for example, you get the real space lattice, you get the point group information, the space group information, the general Wyckoff position. So again, this would be the, I believe 192, yep, different general Wyckoff equations, the representative Wyckoff positions, basically, and then some geometry files. And then again, some Brave lattice information for the super lattice, reciprocal lattice, and then again, different postcards in different geometry file formats. So in a primitive representation and a conventional cell representation. And then the last uh, function that I wanted to highlight is the symmetry group here. So in the introduction slides, I basically mentioned a couple of different uh, point groups or symmetry groups that you could calculate. So you can calculate things like the crystal point group, factor group, and all of these listed here. And if you do, for instance, the factor group or unit cell symmetry, you get the explicit symmetry operations. So for example, in this case, it's the identity. So maybe let's find a more interesting symmetry operator. Here we see a roto inversion, and you can see that we give you the rotation matrix in Cartesian and fractional coordinates, matrix generator, SO3, uh, and SU2, if you're familiar with some of that uh, Lie algebra or Lie group theory, quaternions, uh, and then also the lattice trans or the fractional translations as well. And so this is a more human readable form, but you can also do a JSON format. So if you go kind of back up and you go to the output type, you can change it from plain text to JSON. And so if you were to again run this, now you basically get the same information, but in a key value pair, uh, basically a JSON object. And so again, this is, nice if you want to easily query things. So for example, if you wanted to kind of integrate this in your own workflow, you can basically use this functionality and grab maybe, for instance, the rotation matrix and grab this essentially this two-dimensional array. And there are also some other uh, functions uh, that also support JSON format. And so yeah, I, I would encourage you if you're interested to play with that as well. The last two things I wanted to mention is that you can change the symmetry tolerance. So you can, as I mentioned, there's two preset defaults. So there's tight and loose. And so you can change that and then apply the particular symmetry operation. And then you can also do this uh, magnetic structure, uh, crystal spin analysis. So you can specify the magnetic moment on each atom. So for instance, if you had maybe two atoms, you could specify maybe an anti-ferromagnetic ordering, where basically you input the magnetic moment for each atom in your unit cell. 
All right. So are there any other questions about um, this online interface? I know I kind of went fast with some of the different uh, things you can calculate, um, but there's a decent amount of functionality online. And then at the end, I'll show you, or I'll mention how you can download A-Flow and perform even more uh, symmetry uh, functionality via the command line. But are there any questions so far about the A-Flow online interface? So I, so far I've only mentioned the symmetry functions, but you'll notice that there's some other functionality and I think we'll be seeing some of this a little bit later on. Oh, and for those who are interested, uh, for the K points, if you wanted to determine the standard K paths uh, based on the uh, A-flow definition, you can submit that and it'll basically give you the line mode for the K points file to do the band structure calculation, for instance. All right, so if there aren't any questions, um, I'll go ahead and go on to the next part. So again, this was kind of a crash course in symmetry, but next I'm gonna show you how you can actually generate materials with A-Flow. So let me go ahead and navigate back to the PDF. So now I'm gonna be talking about the crystal prototype encyclopedia. So this is our method for generating hypothetical new materials with the A-Flow software. So the idea here is that we want to identify these backbone structures that we can decorate with different elements to accelerate materials design. And so the first question is, where, do, where can we find these structure prototypes? So there are many different catalogs uh, that you can find in the literature. For example, Pearson's Handbook, the Structure of Crystals, uh, the Strukturbericht series, uh, the American Mineralogist Crystal Structure Database. And so these are very valuable tools. However, they're not very conducive for actually generating these or generating geometry files for these. And so this is something that we wanted to overcome with this new encyclopedia. We wanted to be able to generate these materials on the fly. In addition, uh, a lot of these uh, references will have arbitrary designations for a prototype. So for example, this rock salt structure, you can refer to it as rock salt, or many times it's referred to just as NACL, NGO, or if you're familiar with the Stuttgart series, uh, this would have the designation B1. But unfortunately, these designations don't actually tell you what the structure looks like. Um, you would just need to memorize or know that ah, B1 is the rock salt prototype structure and what is the symmetry of that structure. So that's one thing that we wanted to overcome with the encyclopedia. The other is that a lot of times you need to have a base knowledge of crystallography to kind of understand or generate geometry files from these resources. So for example, a lot of times though, these resources will just give you space group 216 and then the Wyckoff position here. But then you as a user would need to automatically generate these four coordinates that correspond to this one Wyckoff position. And so we wanted to, with this encyclopedia, basically take care of these dif difficulties so that way we could do um, automatic materials generation. And so AFLOW currently has um, over 1,100 prototypes uh, that you can generate. Uh, with the software. So for example, we have the Heusler structure, anti-Heusler, half-Heusler, and we have functionality that you can automatically decorate these structures with different elements. And so you can do this programmatically uh, via the command line, and you can also do this online uh, at this URL here. And so but before we navigate there, I just wanted to highlight that this prototype encyclopedia uh, essentially on each entry page that I'll show you, or also we have a, a document where you can essentially visualize these in a catalog. Uh, you can find information about the standard labels, historic labels, the symmetries, uh, and some the Stuttgart designation, and then also the visualizations of these particular prototypes. And again, all of these are integrated into the A-Flow software, so you can generate them. And we've, we have a few installments of this particular work and 
We just recently uh, published part three. It's currently being, it's in, in, the, in the preprint stage right now, uh, but currently all 1,100 are online and you can generate them. And so before we navigate there, the other thing I wanted to mention is, I mentioned this idea of arbitrary designations. And so with this encyclopedia, we wanted to come up with a standard designation that would essentially tell you what the structure prototype looked like. So here we've come up, come up with, with what's known as the A-flow label. And essentially, it's this underscore delimited string. And so you can see that each of these fields separated by underscores tells you something about the particular prototype. The first field is the reduced stoichiometry. The second is the Pearson symbol. The third is the space group number. And then the subsequent fields are the Wyckoff letters associated with each species. So in this case, species A has Wyckoff letter B, and then species B also has Wyckoff letter B. However, this alone is not enough to determine a unique geometry file or a unique geometry. We also need to specify certain degrees of freedom based on the symmetry of this label. And in this case, there's four degrees of freedom. We have the A lattice parameter, the ratio of C over A, and then some of these Z Wyckoff parameters. But what's nice is that just given this label and degrees of freedom, you can generate a geometry file with A-flow. And you can also tune these degrees of freedom. So you can lower the C over A ratio and you can actually squish the cell essentially, or you can change the Z coordinates and you can change the distance uh, in the Z direction. And what's nice about this particular way of changing the geometry is that regardless of how you change these parameters, the structure will still have this underlying symmetry designated by this label. So essentially you can change the structure in keeping of the same symmetry. And so even though this is one label, you can generate essentially an infinite number of geometry files just from this one label by changing the degrees of freedom. So are there any questions about the A-flow label or how we um, denote these structures or any other questions up to this point? Okay, so let's go ahead and navigate uh, to the encyclopedia, the online encyclopedia. <clears throat> so again, let me go ahead and close some of these tabs. All right, so again, if you go to aflow.org, you'll be taken to this page. And if you scroll down, you can go to the prototype encyclopedia and it'll take you to this page here. And again, if you wanted to just navigate straight there, I put the link in the chat. So here's the online interface for the Encyclopedia of Crystallographic Prototypes. You can see the current number of entries in the encyclopedia. There's some basic search functionality and you can search based on space group, Pearson symbol, uh, this Stuttgart-Tubitsch designation. So for example, if you wanted to search by space group, you can hit the space group card. You can basically find, oh, okay, here are the orthorhombic space groups. And then you can search based on the space group number for the orthorhombic crystal systems. And then each of these cards corresponds to a particular prototype. Again, you can search by different things, space group, Pearson symbol, uh, there's a prototype index, which is essentially a, a filter, filterable table. And then also, uh, if you wanted some information about uh, crystallography, we also have kind of some uh, reference pages here. So for example, for orthorhombic systems, if you wanted to know what the lattice vectors look like, and basically the space group breakdown for each of the lattice types, those are listed here. So there's some information here as well. So, but let's say you wanted to search for a particular prototype. Uh, if you just actually hit this search button here, 
it'll take you to this basic search page. Uh, and so there's some primitive search functionality that you can perform. You can search by space group by typing it in. Uh, but let's go ahead and type in a particular compound name. So corundum. If you hit enter, it'll find all the ones that correspond to that query. And in this case, we essentially have two because uh, one is similar, a different phase of corundum. But let's go ahead and click on this corundum entry here. So this takes us to a particular prototype entry page. So here you can visualize uh, the structure. And so again, here's a JMO viewer. You can play with the viewer. You can visualize the conventional cell, the primitive cell, or both superimposed. And there, again, there's some other JMO functionality. If you scroll down, you'll see the particular prototype. So in this case, this is a particular compound that exhibits this structure. So AL203. Here's this prototype label that I mentioned, the Struktubitisch designation, if it has one, Pearson symbol, space group information. And then if you are generating this particular geometry file in a flow, this is the actual command that you would type in. So you would do this command here and then for this params, you would specify those degrees of freedom that I mentioned. Uh, we have some notes on other compounds that exhibit this structure, some useful comments that we found in the literature. We give you the primitive vectors and basis vectors. So the basically the atom positions. And again, you'll notice they're in symbolic notation. So they're given with respect to A, B, C, alpha, beta, gamma, and X, Y, and Z. And again, that highlights this idea that you can change these degrees of freedom in keeping with this label. Some references where we found the structure, uh, some geometry files uh, that you can easily download. But one of the main things I want to highlight is at the bottom of this page, this is the prototype generator. So you can basically generate these structures online. And so again, here's the degrees of freedom you can play with, the species, and then there's multiple different geometry files you can create. So you can hit this VASP output and you get the VASP geometry file. You can do quantum espresso, FHI Ames, Abinit, SIF, etc. And you can also change the species and degrees of freedom. So for example, maybe you want to change this C over A ratio to let's say 4.0, and maybe let's do iron instead. And again, you can generate a geometry file for, for that. You can see that the lattice parameters changed, and now instead of aluminum, we have iron. And so this is a way that you can easily change um, or create a structure uh, via the uh, AFLOW prototype encyclopedia web pages. And so again, this is available for each system that we have. So for example, if you wanted to do, let's say, Karavs, Perovskite, you can see we have a couple of different Perovskites. And again, you would see a similar type of format or template. And again, you can generate the structure at the bottom of the page. Are there any questions about the prototype encyclopedia and how you can generate these structures online? All right, so it looks like no questions. Uh, again, in the slides, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I've also given you basically a, a reminder of basically how you can visualize these structures or basically what the format of each entry page is uh, in the PDF. All right, so with that, I'll go to the last section uh, for this particular session, and that is the AFLOW ExoFinder module. So the purpose of this module is to promote structural diversity in data sets or in the 
or in the AFLO.org uh, repository, and also to determine prototype structures uh, given a large set of inputs. So the idea here is that uh, first, we need a software that can essentially automatically determine duplicates. So for example, let's say we have a large data set and we wanna know whether or not there are any duplicates in the set. And the reason this is important is maybe for instance, data mining. So for example, as we saw before, there were many different rock salt structures. And so maybe we don't wanna have all of these rock salt structures in the AFLOW database, and maybe we want to basically determine which ones are unique or equivalent. And this is also important for machine learning. So for example, if you have a training set of structures, you don't wanna have many duplicates in the set or any duplicates in the set because that can bias your machine learning model. And so we wanted to generate or create an algorithm that could easily and automatically determine duplicates. In addition, we wanted to create a software that could identify these backbone prototype structures. So again, we could have an automatic framework to detect new structure types that we can use to promote uh, materials discovery. However, uh, this is actually a little bit harder of a problem because uh, since we're modeling crystals, which are periodic, uh, we have essentially different lattice and origin choices that we can represent our system with. So for example, in this case, you can see there's these three uh, unit cells and they look slightly different, but they are actually the same material. And so we wanted to develop a software or an algorithm that could essentially determine equivalency regardless of the unit cell representation. And so this is where the AFLOW XDL Finder module comes into play. So the first problem that we wanted to solve is to determine the, pro the prototype of a particular material. And so again, this is a self-consistent method similar to the symmetry detection method that I mentioned in the first part. And so the idea here is that if you change the symmetry tolerance, which again, we use symmetry typically to classify the prototype structure, we can see that if we change the tolerance value, you get essentially different prototype classifications. And so again, uh, this prototype finder uses this same tolerance idea to, or tolerance scan idea to find consistent prototype designations given an input structure. And so typically uh, with this functionality, we can find the ideal prototype designation, which will give us all of the relevant symmetry information. And typically we found, as we saw in the AFLOW symmetry software, that typically this default tolerance is the most consistent with experiment. And so this is typically the symmetry tolerance that we use to classify prototype structures. And so with this functionality in play or available, we can automatically classify a geometry file what its prototype designation should be. So again, we saw this prototype designation. We can determine this for any arbitrary system that we may encounter. And again, this is a useful representation because it's consistent with the International Tables for Crystallography. It's tunable, so we can change these degrees of freedom. And you can regenerate them with the AFLOW software. So if you were to feed in these parameters, you can generate a geometry file and use it uh, to perform a simulation. So that's the first part is classifying prototype structures. Next, we wanted to be able to determine structural equivalence or uniqueness. And so the AFLOW XDL Finder offers essentially three comparison modes or three leveling degree or uh, varying degrees of comparison. The first is a symmetry comparison. So it, will calculate the symmetries regardless of what the representations are, and it will determine uh, how their symmetries differ or how they're the same. And this will determine what we call isopointal structures. So these are structures that have the same symmetry. So that's the first level of equivalency. The next are local geometry comparisons. So essentially we kind of zoom in on one atom position and look at the neighborhood around that atom and compare the coordinations. And so this will essentially give us a local snapshot information of what the structure looks like. And again, we can use this as a comparison metric. 
And then the last uh, most rigorous comparison metric is this geometric comparison where we basically map atom positions onto one another. So essentially we do a lattice and origin search to find consistent or commensurate uh, lattice representations. And then we have some similarity metrics to see how well the structures overlap with one another when superimposed. And this will tell us what structures are what we say isoconfigurational. So it means they have the same structure. And so this is essentially the final level of comparison to determine uniqueness. And so you can use uh, the ExoFinder functionality to compare your own data sets. So again, if you were to download the Aplos software, you can compare maybe you know, tens, twenties, hundreds of different geometry files that you may have, and you can compare them and determine what the prototype is. And you can also determine which ones are unique or duplicates. But again, we're gonna focus on online functionality. And so I wanted to highlight that there are two comparison modes online that you can actually compare an input structure to the prototype encyclopedia. So for example, if you have, let's say a SIF file and you wanted to determine what the prototype designation is or, or if it's in the encyclopedia, you can do this automatically. And basically it'll analyze your input structure, find any possible duplicates or equivalent ones, and it'll determine which ones are a match, if any. And you can find out what the common name is, for instance, or the Stratubidish designation would be for your input structure. The second comparison mode that you can do is you can compare your input structure to the A-flow database. So as Dr. Esther showed, we have this AFLUX functionality, and that's actually what's being used under the hood in this case. So you, you would upload your structure and it would analyze it and would perform the relevant AFLUX query, grab all of the relevant structures, and then do this comparison that I mentioned to find all of the duplicate compounds within the AFLUX database. So again, as we saw, for example, this rock salt sodium chloride, we saw that there were a couple that were online uh, in the AFLOW database. And so in this case, we can actually see that we have, I think in this case, it's about 27 uh, different sodium chloride structures that match to this input. And you can see they have a small level of what we say misfit. So that's the level of similarity. And we've also plotted their uh, enthalpy per atom. And so you can see that all of these similar structures have similar enthalpies. And so this is a nice result because this kind of highlights this structure property relationship that we'd expect similar structures to have similar properties. And so again, this is functionality that you can, use, that you can perform with AFLOW ExoFinder. And so with that, I'll show you some of the online functionality that you can do. So again, I'm gonna exit out of the presentation and again, if you go to aflow.org and go to the aflow online, you can see that, again, if you scroll down beyond the symmetry, you can see that we have structure comparison methods. And so right now we have two methods you can perform. The first is you can compare to a library. So you can compare to the aflow database. And again, this may take a little bit of time because it has to analyze the structure, perform the AFLUX query, and then determine all of the equivalent entries. And so in this case, based on this input geometry that we have, there are essentially four um, matching compounds in the AFLOW database. And on the right here, this is their misfit value. So the closer this value is to zero, the better the match. In addition, you can also do compare to prototypes. And so you can see that in this case, there is a matching prototype that we have, and it has this particular designation. All right. So are there any questions about that? Um, essentially, what you can do is you can, again, upload your own SIF file. Uh, our own geometry file, and you can perform these analyses via AFLOW online. 
All right, so if there aren't any questions, it looks like we've got some time left. So and let's go ahead and navigate to the exercises. So I think what we'll do here is um, I'll briefly introduce the exercises and then I'll give you maybe 15 minutes or so uh, to do these exercises. And you can feel free to either ask questions um, via the chat or um, raise your hand. And then if you find the answers to these solutions, you can feel free also to post them in the chat. So for this first exercise, uh, I wanted you to use the AFLOW online functionality to determine the space group uh, for this particular prototype, and then change the tolerance from tight to loose and see how the space group changes. The next is you're gonna do this crystal spin symmetry analysis. So again, if you actually go to the AFLOW online page, you would use this magnetic structure, and then you would specify the magnetic moment indicated by the exercise. And then next, you'll actually go to a particular AFLOW entry page, and then you'll determine what the AFLOW prototype label is. And that is given here, in, actually in the symmetry section, this is the A-flow prototype. And this will give you the degrees of freedom and then also the label here. And then the last um, exercise is to grab the rock salt structure from the prototype entries or from the prototype encyclopedia, generate it, and then use this compare to library functionality that I just showed and see how many A-flow entries match to the input. All right, so I'll go ahead and give you maybe 15 minutes to do that, and then I'll show you how to do that. And then, again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, post in the chat. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start going through the solutions. So let me go ahead and open up a browser. I'll kind of have it side by side. Okay, so for this first exercise, uh, we needed to navigate to this particular prototype entry page. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy from here into the URL. And so this takes, to a, takes us to this particular prototype structure. And so we wanna generate a geometry file with the default parameters from the web page. So again, if you scroll to the bottom, Then all we need to do is you could have generated any of these formats, but I'm just going to do postcard. And then all we need to do is go ahead and copy and use your copy paste. And then we need to go to, again, aflow.org. And then if you go to aflow online, We just want to upload this geometry file. All right. And then the directions were to analyze the space group. So again, hit the space group button. And then we're going to use the tight tolerance and then the loose. And so you can see that if we use the default tight tolerance, we get space group 119 which is as expected based on the prototype label, if you remember that this third field is the space group number. But then if you use the loose, so if you change the symmetry tolerance to loose and then hit submit again, we see we get space group 227. And so again, this highlights this idea that kind of this tolerance number line idea where if you change the tolerance threshold, you can observe higher or lower symmetry. And so you may be wondering, does this make sense? So actually, if you go back to this prototype web page, and if you scroll up a little bit, we actually have some comments on the structure. And in this case, this particular structure has certain phases. And so in general, 
um, you can see that depending on what phase it is, uh, these are actually separate prototype pages, but there's also a comment that if we change the aflo sim tolerance, uh, that actually becomes uh, cubic, as we saw. So again, um, sometimes in literature, we'll also see that maybe multiple space groups were recorded. And so what's nice about changing this tolerance is that we can essentially um, see that if we change the tolerance a little bit. So maybe space group reported, in this case, 119 and 227, this, the aflo sim software would be able to kind of recover this, um, this dual description, essentially. So are there any questions about the first exercise or how we did that? Again, feel free to post in the chat or raise your hand. So for the next exercise, what we need to do, I'm just gonna refresh the page to get the original geometry file back. And in this case, we're using the magnetic structure um, symmetry analysis. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna determine the y cup positions without spin polarization. So without specifying the magnetic moment. So if we just go to the y cup positions, hit submit, we see that we get space group 225 and three y cup positions. So with multiplicity four, 24, and four. But now, based on the directions, if we hit the magnetic structure button and then specify spin up for all of the atoms in the unit cell except the second to last platinum. So in this case, there are eight atoms. So if we do one, two, three, four, five, six. So basically, if the second to last platinum, we put spin down. And it's kind of a fictitious uh, spin polarization, but if we submit, we can see that the symmetry changed. So we broke the symmetry, and now we see that essentially this platinum, instead of having just two Wyckoff positions, now we have four Wyckoff positions. And what's nice is actually you can, let's say you did a ab initio calculation, and a lot of times you might get the spin information or the magnetic moment from the out car if you're running fast. Um, if you use the programmatic uh, command line, you can actually specify the location of the out car and actually AFLO will read the magnetic moment from the out car and you can process the symmetry that way as well. All right, so then the third exercise was to go to a particular entry page. And again, I'm just gonna copy it and put it in the URL. And we wanted to determine the prototype designation. So one thing that uh, even before actually running this on AFLOW online, you can see that actually the AFLOW prototype information is on every entry page. So again, using the Excel Finder software, we've categorized all of the prototypes in the AFLOW database. And so in this case, we already essentially know what the answer is. But, if we go to the bottom of this page and we continue with the exercise, we want to grab the VASP comp car. So if you go to the relaxed structure information at the bottom of the page, you can get some of the geometry file, the relaxed geometry files. And in this case, we want VASP. We see we have essentially a postcard. If we copy and paste and then go back to AFLOW online. Let's reset everything. May need to just refresh the page to clear everything out. But if we copy and paste the structure in here, and then if we do, in this case, we want to determine the prototype designation and how many degrees of freedom. So if we go to the prototype button, it'll analyze the geometry file and determine what the label, which is consistent with what we saw on the entry page, and then the degrees of freedom. And in this case, how many? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six parameters that you would need to specify. All right, and then the last exercise was to go to the encyclopedia page. So again, if you just go to aflow.org, and in this case, I didn't give you a URL, and I kind of wanted you to navigate with the search functionality. 
So if you go to the prototype page, and you can use the search functionality, you can either search by space group or you can just type in rock, find rock salt. And then in this case, we wanted to basically create the rock salt structure with the default parameters. We can go ahead and grab this, copy paste. And then in this case, what we want to do is we want to use the compare to library functionality and we want to compare to the database. So what this will do is it will compare all of the, it'll take this rock salt structure, the input structure, analyze it or compare it against all of those in the database and return all of the matches. And so this is essentially the example that I showed in the slides. And so again, it'll take uh, maybe a minute or two, or shouldn't take too long, but uh, keep in mind that it has to grab all of the relevant entries via the AFLUX query and then compare them. And so in this case, we found 27 matches to the input. And these are essentially all rock salt uh, sodium chloride structures that are either, most of them are from the ICSD. Again, um, I think as John mentioned, um, these could be at different temperatures, pressures. Uh, and so, but again, and once we do a relaxation um, via an ab initio method, essentially these all will become degenerate. And so we can essentially see that um, via this misfit value, they're all close to zero. All right, so are there any questions about the exercises? Or about any of the functionality that you can do uh, or the structural analysis functionality that you can do online? All right, so if not, the last thing that I wanted to mention uh, before we break for lunch is, again, I've shown you online functionality, but if you were to install AFLOW, you could uh, do some of these things uh, via the command line or even Python modules, and you can specify different flags, parameters, so you can um, play with more options. And then also there's uh, much more functionality that we weren't able to cover, cover online. But just to kind of show you, uh, if you go to AFLOW online, oh, If you go to the aflow.org webpage, if you're interested in installing the aflow software, you can go to source here. And Dr. Esters has been working uh, a lot on automating this installation process. So you can install the aflow source code. Again, as we said on Mac, Windows, um, or Linux. And then here's some essentially some information and how you can basically customize your installation. And then once you have this, you can actually perform a lot of the symmetry commands and then also some of the other functionality we'll see later today you can do if you were to install AFLOW. And so if you're interested in uh, learning more about these modules, uh, I've given you the relevant articles. And then if you download AFLOW, um, you can run these commands to find basically or generate readmes for all this functionality and you can see the different options.